This video is sponsored by Miller Lite. So I decided to get rid of my iPhone 11 Pro Max. Basically downgraded to the iPhone 11. I got the black colorway. And thinking about making a video about why I decided to do that. Give this video a thumbs up if you'd like to know why I downgraded to the iPhone 11 from the Pro Max. This video is gonna be pretty similar to the last video. Uh, I got some really good feedback from that video. Thank you all so much. I'm glad you all enjoyed it. Um, I really don't wanna do a skit for these past two videos, and I mean including this video, because I wanna have more of an intimate conversation where I'm just thinking of things to talk about as the video goes along. One, it's easier to edit, but two, it just feels more intimate. It doesn't feel like a play, right? There's no skit or anything like that. One of the main questions, or one of the most popular questions I typically get is how to get your first internship as an engineering major or as a computer science major, which is a great question because you wanna be able to get real world experience, especially when you are an engineering major, and when I say engineering major, I'm gonna just include computer science into that mix um, because a lot of computer science programs are within the engineering college. I know mine was, so I'm just gonna throw CS into the mix when I say engineering major. It's super important to have real world experience, especially um, if you're looking for a software engineering type of job because there's so much competition out there. There's a ton of jobs out there, but there's so much competition out there and so many people are learning how to program at such a young age. They kind of expect you to know certain programming languages by the time you're like a sophomore or junior, even if your university doesn't teach you those languages in the curriculum. So one thing you're probably gonna notice is that your curriculum isn't gonna necessarily align with what you're gonna be doing in your day-to-day -day job as a full-time developer or as an intern, but learning object-oriented programming, for example, is a important fundamental, fundamental to learn in order to get that job because once you learn object-oriented programming, then you can really learn any other language. All right, so the number one thing to getting an internship is you wanna make sure your resume is up to date you wanna make sure your resume is appealing. So you really wanna to cut to the chase, don't talk around things in your resume. So in the top portion where it says summary, don't do a whole paragraph about yourself. Just say, hey, I'm looking for a mechanical engineering job in X, or I'm looking for a front-end software engineering job. Because recruiters come across a lot of resumes and it's much easier for them to see a resume that says, hey, I'm looking for this job, and then they could think, oh, do we have this job available? Yes, we do. Let me keep reading your resume to see if any of your skill sets fit the requirements we have for the job. So then I'm gonna, so then after your summary, you wanna have like your university that you attend, your GPA, put your GPA on there if it's over 3.0, if it's under 3.0, don't put it on there because a lot of times they may not even ask you what your GPA is especially if you already have experience. But if you don't have experience, um, you still don't put your GPA if it's under 3.0. Let them ask you, because a lot of companies may not care even if you don't have experience. So you have your university underneath your summary and the major you are studying um, or getting a degree in, and then underneath that, you wanna have any relevant experience. So if you don't have any experience, that's okay. Put personal projects there. Put um, any work experience that you have, I think, um, adding work experience outside of maybe the field of study you're in and you pair that with relevant projects to the industry you're interested in working in or the job you're interested in um, having or the company you're working for. If you pair those two together, even if you don't have experience that's relevant to the job um, or world, real world experience, that's okay because Sometimes they just don't expect you to have experience, especially when you're 19 years old, you're not gonna have any software engineering internship experience, or if you're 20, 20 years old, or even 21 years old. So make sure you put relevant projects that you've done in college, and make sure you put down relevant projects that you've done, like your own personal projects, and have a GitHub account. Uh, have your GitHub link at the top of your resume as well if you're looking for a programming internship. And then underneath that, you're gonna wanna have um, the actual skill sets that you have. 
Um, and you could flip the two, but I think it's it, it depends. I'll say if you don't have any relevant real world experience, put your skill sets first. I don't know if there's really a rule to this. I'm just giving you some advice and ranting right now. But put your skill sets first, and then underneath that, put your experience. I'm pretty sure I've done that in my resume before. Keeping your consumers and subscribers up to date during every step of the journey is now easy through MailerLite's email automation. Building strong relationships with your audience through warm welcomes to new subscribers, celebrating anniversaries, milestones, and updates regarding your business or brand to your subscribers. The very intuitive automation workflow tool allows you to build a new workflow in a matter of minutes and gives you the flexibility to create personalized workflow. You can also track your results, activity, and your history. The subscriber management tool allows you to organize your subscribers and so you can also create interest groups while keeping your email list healthy. Sometimes your subscribers are busy just like you are and can lose track of important emails and newsletters. Auto Resend gives you the ability to automatically follow up with your audience, consumers, and customers who haven't yet opened your first email. With that being said, Back to the regular programming. Next thing that you wanna do, which is the obvious thing, is you wanna show up to the career fair, right? Like, show up to the career fair, especially you computer science and software engineering majors. And I know I'm catering towards you all. I'm sorry for any other engineering majors that I'm not necessarily catering to in this video, but I think the advice that I'm giving is valuable to any major in general. But since I was a computer science major, I have more experience with that and that's typically what I can talk about or have some credibility to talk about, but I would say show up to the career fair. And the reason why I say that, it seems obvious, but to a lot of students, they don't have the confidence to show up to the career fair. And you wanna show up because a lot of times just showing up can land you that interview. That's how I got my first internship. I was a freshman, I didn't have any real world tech experience, programming experience, besides a program that I did in the, over the summer, but I showed up. And since I showed up, I showed them that I'm passionate about software development, I'm passionate about computer science, and I have the drive to actually come and give you my resume, even though I was 18 years old at the time. And then they also gave me an interview, and then I ended up getting an internship at the company that I'm working at right now, as a 23 year old. So yeah, make sure you show up. And it's another reason why it's important to show up is because it's much easier to explain your resume and your experience and just who you are as a person in person opposed to trying to make them figure out like who you are and if you um, have the skill sets that are required for the job or if you're even good for the job. A lot of times personality and um, technical skill sets together can give you that push that you need to get into that door that you want to get into. Apply to at least 30 different internships. And I know that in the professional services at Ohio University, well within the Russ College of Engineering, they recommend applying to 30 internships or 30 jobs because they figure you're probably gonna hear back from 10 and get interviewed from, you're probably gonna hear back from 10 and you know, hopefully maybe you get 10 interviews and then um, maybe three will give you an offer or maybe um, you'll get three interviews and one will give you an offer. Um, I think more so if you apply to 30, you'll probably get like four interviews and maybe one or two will give you an offer. That just seems more realistic. My recommendation is to apply to a hundred different internships. The reason being is because the more internships you apply for, the more likely you're gonna get an internship because someone is gonna give, show you some love. Someone is gonna give you a call back. And then if you may, maybe you get a call back from 10 different companies and three of the interviews you know you're gonna crush because they're not even technical, right? Maybe they're using the STAR method and you do well with that. Or maybe they're technical and you know that you're gonna crush it because you feel very prepared. But maybe the other seven or the other five, you don't know if you're gonna get because they're really competitive. Well then, maybe if you get three offers, then you can start negotiating your, um, your, your salary or I would say what you're getting paid hourly for your internship. So apply to as many internships as possible. 
Some people only apply to like 10 or they apply really late and that just doesn't make sense to me. Also, make sure you don't only apply to big companies. I can't even take credit for saying that. Lee is the one who recommended that I say that, but it's so, so true. Um, one thing that I did um, senior year that I kind of regret is that I only apply to super high-end companies. And if I'm being 100% honest with you, I didn't get any of those companies. And the reason being is because, well, you know, a lot of them were in New York and a lot of them were in like Silicon Valley and I didn't get them. Like I made it to a final round of interviews to a big tech company in San Francisco and that was as far as I got. But if I would have applied to, you know, maybe mid tier companies or companies that aren't as big, I would have gotten more opportunities to live in other cities or work for other tech companies had I applied to companies that weren't so big or had such a, a big name behind them. I'm not saying don't apply to big name companies or big, big companies. And when I mean big companies, I mean big name. You wanna to apply to big companies because they have a ton of opportunities for you. But um, apply to big name companies as well, but don't just say I'm only looking for this firm in Manhattan or this type of firm or this type of tech company and it has to be in San Francisco because the competition is tough, especially when you're an Ohio kid like me applying to a job in New York or San Francisco where the students who are applying to those jobs that live in that city or in that state get FaceTime with those recruiters. So it makes it that much harder for out of state people applying to those jobs. Another thing to make sure you attend are networking events. For example, at OU, we have a partnership with Chase. Um, the National Society of Black Engineers had a partnership with Chase when I was there. So they would always throw um, networking events and Going to those networking events were great because I was able to meet people that worked at Chase. I was able to meet um, hiring managers that work at Chase, get some FaceTime with them, talk to them about my skill sets, my experiences, and what I want in a career. And you're able to get cards of you know hiring managers that you won't be able to, you wouldn't be able to do that if you don't go to a networking event. I went to a ton of networking events um, when I went to the National Society of Black Engineers National Convention. So I went to, I've been to like Apple parties, like literally like. Apple Corporation parties, um, Twitter parties, Microsoft parties. Not only was I, able, was I able to meet other students who end up working at some of those companies or new people at those companies, but I met people that work at those companies and you know, coming, living in Athens, Ohio, you don't always get those huge, huge name companies. Every once in a while you'll get Amazon or Microsoft come in, but um, you rarely get some of those Silicon Valley companies. So I really took advantage of those networking events. Those are really, really great. And it's a, it's a great way to get your foot in the door. So since we're on the topic of conventions and conferences, networking events, make sure you go to conferences if you can. Let me tell you, if you are a computer science major, there's like a retail tech conference that's lit. I don't know if it's still like this, but it's literally free. And it was free last year. One of my friends went to New York City for free. And she also went to LA the year before that. And I have friends that I graduated with that went to Houston for free. And there's these amazing speakers and all these retail companies who are looking for computer science and software engineering majors who are interested in working in the retail space because a lot of these retail companies need to revamp their apps. They need to revamp their websites, their databases. They need tech because everything is you know on your phone nowadays everything is online nowadays most shopping is online nowadays for example so this conference is literally free and you get a chance to network and one of my friends actually is working at a company that i think she met at this retail conference or that she was able to network with so also engineering engineering programs will pay for you to go to those conferences i know at ohio university i took advantage of that so I wanna say every, yeah, literally every year I went to a conference for free. And I got so many networking opportunities, so many internship opportunities. It was amazing because you go to these conventions where there's literally like 200 companies, like literally from Ford to Google, to Tesla, to Microsoft, to Dell, all these companies looking to hire you know, minorities when I went to the National Society of Black 
engineers conference and uh, the retail conference, for example. So definitely take advantage of that. So I can't, I can't think of anything I might have missed um, right now. I think that is enough information to get you an internship. Um, forgive me if I ranted at all. Forgive me if I went on a rant at all. I'm really passionate about all this kind of stuff. I really want to help you all get internships and full-time jobs. It's so amazing when I hear that you all are out there crushing it, getting internships and full-time jobs and that you're saying that my videos helped you. That's amazing. Keep commenting, uh, liking the video. Um, it lets me know that you're finding value in the content that I'm making. So that pretty much concludes this video. Once again, shout out to our sponsor, MailerLite. Make sure you click the link down in the description box to learn more about email marketing and how that can help your brand and your business.